Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this video on trading the news uh, using supply and demand. And um, I'm going to show you my approach on how I trade the news. And it's not trading the news using supply and demand zones per se, it's using supply and demand or understanding where the supply and demand order equation is um, when it comes to orders and liquidity. And uh, what you have to really grasp when you're trading and always keep in mind is that the market is a zero sum game, meaning for someone to win, someone else has to lose. So when you press buy on your broker, yeah, you press buy, uh, someone is on the other side of that trade. So obviously your, your broker's on the other side of that trade. That's sell, right? Buy is demand, yeah, and sell is supply. So where is the supply and where is the demand, right? And money is not made, it is taken. It basically transfer from the buyer to the seller or the seller to the buyer, yeah? So the markets are manipulated. It's just a function of how the market has to work because um, everybody can't be long. Yeah, everybody can't be short. There has to be enough sell orders for buyers to fill the order. And if you're getting short, right, and everyone's pressing sell, there has to be enough buy orders, yeah, in the market, you know, around for you know the market to go higher. So there needs to be enough liquidity in the market. And if there's not enough liquidity in the market for the market, for example, to go up, yeah, and everyone's buying. There has to be enough what sell orders to fill those buy orders. And if there's not, then the market will search where these sell orders are. And if these, the majority of the sell orders are below the market, yeah, i.e. stop losses, then the market will go down, yeah, and take out the stop losses, right? Filling buy orders before it goes higher. And the edge when it comes to news trading is not trading the expected, right? It's trading the unexpected, right? So these are the scenarios that most people have, you know, maybe not necessarily, you know, written out, but um, uh, these are the scenarios when news events come out, um, what can happen, right? So we have expected news result, and then we have an expected price action. There is no edge, yeah, in the expected news result being uh, occurring. So if news trading was easy and for example, you know, Forex Factory said that, you know, the Norm Farms is gonna be this figure and it comes out as that figure and where's the edge, right? Every, it's, it's clear for everybody to see, right? Everyone's gonna be a buyer or everyone's gonna be a seller, yeah? Where we have an edge is the unexpected news result. Yeah, we also have an edge when it comes to expected news results, but unexpected price action, right? That is also an edge. I'm not going to really talk about that, but it's to do with, uh, you know, a term I've phrased as capture pain relief or CPR location, right? <clears throat> and this is how we can take advantage of um, um, unexpected, not necessarily uh, just news, but unexpected price action, yeah? And if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll be able to see the concepts there, members only, Euro, USD analysis, right? FOMO, uh, FOMC, sorry, capture pain relief trades, how to identify CPR location, Forex trade zones, etc. right? And um, I go into it in a, in a lot more detail on the course as well, which you can uh, access on the website. But going back to news trading, where the edge is, is unexpected news results yeah and with unexpected news results we get an expected price action so let's give an example of this this would be um, the unexpected news result for today for the Fed cut would be for either no change because there's the financial institutions are not expecting any type of change or we have a 21% or 22% chance of a 0.5% um, uh, cut. 78 or say round up to 80%, 79% um, of the market financial institutions think there's gonna be a 0.25% cut. 
Right, it's going to be a cut regardless, you see what I'm saying, with well, the probabilities anyway, right? The Fed is expected to cut rates for the first time since the financial crisis. So my approach to this is not to trade this um, uh, this this result if it comes out as 0.25, because it's expected, it's already been priced into the market. So let me go back, let me get rid of some of this. So when it comes to um, uh, a buy the rumor, sell the fact, yeah? What we wanna do is identify the market state before the news. So let's say, for example, the market has been trending and the news is supposed to be you know, positive because it was probably known that, and it's been known that the Fed may want to um, you know, cut rates. But let's just say for this example, let's say they're hiking rates. And you know, it's about a month to go before they start hiking rates. The smart money, yeah, smart money, financial institutions, whatever you wanna call them, have already been buying in anticipation of potential rate hike. By the time the rate hike comes out, yeah, somewhere around here, retail traders have missed the move. Yeah, the, the banks have already established a bargain price all the way down here with the expectation, yeah, by the rumors of the fact that they're going to hike rates. And by the time they do hike rates on such and such date, yeah, this is being a date, then retail traders, there's no edge there. Right, even if prices was to go higher, this is where the money was made. Yeah, that's where the money was made. What you want to do is look for the edge when unexpected happens. The unexpected happens. So prices trend higher, and then all of a sudden there is no rate hike. What do you think the market's gonna do? The market thought there was a rate hike from here, all right, and it priced in you know, what it thought was gonna be the price, it's being a chart, yeah, if there was a rate hike. If there's no rate hike, what do you think is gonna happen? Or what should happen? Because we deal with probabilities when it comes to uh, the markets. There's no certainties, yeah? But the probability of a, you know, uh, of the market being wrong-footed is where the edge is, yeah? That's what we want to trade, the unexpected news result. Yeah, and the expected price action is for prices to go lower. So we need to identify market state before the news. Yeah, is the market trending into them, into them, in, in, you know, uh, is price action trending or is it, you know, going sideways, right? Meaning that the market is unsure what's gonna happen and then comes out and then obviously breakouts tend to happen. Right, and we need to understand where we're buying. If you're buying at market highs, you're buying at the highs. You know, who, who buys at highs? Buy low, sell highs. The mantra is the you know, the, everyone knows this, yet all objectivity goes out of the window when you know uh, we're looking to trade the news. We disregard what's happened in the past, and we're just so focused on this. The money was made again on the way up again where is the liquidity let's say for example the market does want to go higher yeah let's say for example the market wants to go higher now if everyone starts buying here yeah where are the sell orders as i've previously pointed out where is the sell where is the supply where is the supply where is the supply sorry uh, for uh for for the market to go higher yeah where are the sell orders if everyone is long, it has the market has to look for sell orders. And this is this is where market manipulations come in. This is where the liquidity is. And as I explained before, if everyone is long, you need enough sell orders to fulfill those buy orders. And if you don't have them, then the market will search for those sell orders. So um, I'm gonna show you the example of this matter. In fact, I'm showing you a couple of examples uh, that that's happened over the uh, the past uh, couple of weeks and exactly what I'm talking about. So let's go to, for example, no, not the Euro dollar yet. We'll go to the Euro pound, the Euro pound. So it's a nice example of what I'm talking about. So in the lead up to um, pretty much the uh, conservative um, election and Brexit, Theresa May stood down and uh, the favorite to succeed her was Boris Johnson. 
all right? And uh, you know, this was from the uh, the thirteenth of July. But in the lead up, every point, everyone pretty much knew that Boris Johnson. I would say knew, but the probability that Boris Johnson was gonna, you know, was the favourite, right? The the media kind of um, was trying to make it like it was it was close with you know Jeremy Hunt and everyone else. But Boris was out and out leader, and the results pretty much showed that in in the voting um, of the constituents. But um, uh, Boris Johnson was the favourite. Now, there was a problem because Boris Johnson is has been talking and he's been saying that he wants a uh, a, a Brexit, a, a hard Brexit or a no-deal Brexit. He's more likely to take Britain out with a no-deal Brexit, which isn't good for the market. The market wants a uh, Brexit deal, yeah, um, or, or, or a deal, basically. So the pound is weakening. The pound has been weakening. And even again, up to lead up, the pound could fall to parity with dollar on hard Brexit concerns. So fear of hardline Boris and Jeremy Hunt could push sterling down to mid 80s, says Morgan Stanley. So again, traders were being primed by the news that um, Boris Johnson being uh, potentially a hard Brexiter and taking the UK out of, you know, Brit taking Britain out of the UK with no deal was most, most likely if he gets elected and... Um, the pound would sell off, right? Meaning that, the, you know, the euro pound would go higher. Now, what actually happened on the day? So on the day, we had Boris Johnson wins the race to be uh, to be Tory leader and he's now crowned the prime minister. And this was around one o'clock, you know, 12 o'clock, one o'clock in the afternoon. So let's go back on the hourly time frame to what happened on that day. So we got an expected um, news result, yeah? Expected news result. And what we don't want to do is trade expected news results, right? That's not where the edge is, yeah? The edge is with, if you want to trade in real time, is with the unexpected news result. The market wanted to go higher, right? The market did want to go higher, but everyone was pressing buy. So this is where market manipulations start to occur. Right, and if we go to the chart, this is pretty much what happened. So one o'clock when the, the announcement came out, traders end up buying, putting their stop losses where if you buy, your stop losses are sell. And this is where there was no edge really in Boris Johnson winning the, uh, sorry, winning the, um, the election. There was no edge. The market was searching for the liquidity, the sell orders. It eventually wanted to go higher, which it did. But there was no edge in pressing buy when Boris Johnson, who was expected to win, you know, when it happened. The money was made all the way to the upside. A lot of traders ended up, you know, losing money. So, um, you know, we sat out of this one, and in fact, I've got a little something for you. This was uh, um, is our Telegram group. You can have a look at the conversation that we had. Um, you know, on the day. This is the uh, 23rd of July. You can see it at the top, right? Where I was saying, so if Boris has always been the favourite, and in reality, there shouldn't be any major. I say there shouldn't be any major surprises if price starts to get very volatile. Uh, after Boris is selected, uh, then it's more likely to be a manipulation. I said, here we go. I have a chat with a trader um, who's in there, um, who's in the group named Drew. And uh, I'm sure Drew won't mind, uh, you know, uh, us uh, having this conversation and it being on YouTube. But um, and but he rightly corrects, there is an opportunity to slam some stop hunts, etc. And I said, one, oh, and I said, 100%, yeah. I said 100%. And uh, I said, I've seen this time and time again, right? And uh, GN, he says basically that, and it says uh, short traders, uh, I see the short traders are already in exactly. And when he says short traders, he means they were shorting the pound, yeah? Um, he's waiting for a spike, wipe out their accounts, right? And the market versus, right? Everyone expecting Boris to win and the pound to drop, yeah? That's what everyone is expecting. When does the market do what everyone expects exactly? If, so if Hunt's, uh, if Hunt's, if Hunt's getting, I'll be shocked. And we're talking about it's Jeremy Hunt. Uh, for me, it's a stop hunting, manipulation opportunity, right? 
So, and I said, where's the liquidity? If everyone is anticipating Boris to win, liquidity is in them stops, yeah? So this isn't hindsight. This isn't something I'm just talking about, um, you know, as far as uh, hindsight bias, this was on the day. You know, this is how we plan. This is how we, you know, we trade the news. So basically, long story short, the market took out all the stops, drew in short traders, which is also sell orders, uh, new sell orders, and then the market went about its uh, its merry way, which is which is what it wanted to do, and, and went higher. And again, the edge in the market was not the expected news result, right? The market did the other thing, the other way. Yeah, it took out all the stops, went for the liquidity, and then went on its way. Um, another example of this, all right, a slight, slight variation on this would be, um, for example, recently where we were talking about the uh, the euro, right, and stimulus. So let's go to the chart. In fact, let's go to the euro dollar, euro dollar, yeah, euro dollar. Let's go to the daily. So. Um, on the this is dated 11th of July right 11th of July go back to the chart again 11th of July uh, which is this day here yeah there was a Reuters article and again traders new if you understand fundamentals we have a free fundamental analysis course as well link is in the description box below which basically explains everything about interest rates inflation stimulus etc and what the effects of those have on you know on price and the IMF um, sees prolonged anemic growth in eurozone urges ECB stimulus. Stimulus basically meaning that they want to, you know, the bank will um, will uh, weaken their currency. They want a cheap euro, an absolute cheap euro. So the market knew this, and at the time, you know, this was, you know, the market was kind of coming down into the supply zones. You know, traders getting well, traders who knew were getting short by the rumor, sell the fact, right? So traders were shorting the euro. Yeah, in the lead up to the announcement, which was, um, which happened on the 25th of July, which was five days ago. Yeah, so Euro hints two year low after ECB signals future stimulus. And this was um, where the uh, 25th of July, this is where the uh, potential announcement uh, was supposed to be made. I mean, the market didn't expect it to happen on that day, but they were waiting for Mario Draghi to signal stimulus. It was a rumor here, right? And then they were waiting for confirmation of that. Now, a lot of traders, if we go down into, you know, maybe something like a one hourly chart, a lot of traders were looking at selling based off of dovish comments from Mario Draghi and the ECB. If we go to the replay, and in fact, what we'll do is we'll go down to even like the 30, actually no, we'll go down to something like the 15 minute chart, right? Just to illustrate this point. Now, again, where was the money made in the lead up to the um, the expected dovish announcement that, you know, Mary Draghi would um, uh, introduce stimulus sometime in September, potentially October, right? Money was made all the way up here, and in fact, it's probably made even further back around here. What were retail traders looking to do? Buying at where? At the market lows into this demand zone. They're buying the dollar, I should say, buying and selling the euro, right? And I say buying the dollar at at, at pretty much highs and selling the, 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 the euro at lows, yeah? This is what they're doing, they're selling the euro at the low there was no edge in this and what price is done at the time is a drew traders in yeah so if you were looking to trade this news event after 15 minutes you would have seen a nice you know outside type candle very very bearish candle where are your stops hmm? where are your stops going to be your stops are going to be somewhere placed above the swing and you're expecting prices to do what drop and fall like a knife if everyone is getting short yeah where are the buy orders where are the buy orders the buy orders are going to be above there because if you're selling 
you're getting short here your stop loss is a buy order and surely what happens is that the market starts to stop everybody out yeah stops everybody out and then we are where we are it searches for the liquidity yeah searches for liquidity so with that being said going back to how to trade the news using supply and demand is understanding where the liquidity is all right buy and sell orders we want to trade unexpected news results yeah that's what we really are looking to do if we're trading in real time there's an opportunity and there's always opportunities to trade you know unexpected price action from an expected news result but that's not going to be covered in this video understand that we want the market to be wrong footed yeah today we want the market to be wrong footed the edge is either a 0.5 rate cut or no change it's not at 0.25 yeah in the same way that the edge was not in mario draghi um uh, announcing what everyone expected because traders would end up getting stopped out and not to say that prices can't go higher they tend to you know depending on liquidity and uh, you know stop hunts can last for you know a day or two or even a week or so right we have no idea where you know um, when the market will reverse and what um, if they've actually uh, got enough liquidity but when we're as a separate, I guess, a, a different uh, subject and uh, something maybe I might go into, um, you know, maybe uh, another video. But when it comes to trading the news, the edge is not with expected results. Yeah, that's not where the edge is unless you get unexpected price action as a consequence of the expected results. Yeah. And again, that's through CPR. Or should I say we take advantage of that through CPR? So, guys, hope that helps. Um, take care. And if you have any questions, uh, inf uh, you can email me at info at trading180.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. And um, hope you guys have a great trading week.